Well, as we begin this lesson on this Lord's Day, I want to begin by asking you a question. And the question is, how much do you know? How much do you know about Timothy? How much do you know about Timothy? I got to tell you that, that, that Timothy is a Bible character that has always intrigued me. He's always stood out to me, and maybe that's because I am a preacher. Maybe that is because I'm a relatively young preacher in my mid-30s, like he seemed to be in his life. You know, throughout the New Testament, we learn some very interesting facts about Timothy. For example, in the New Testament, we learn that, that, that Timothy... He was from the city of Lystra, and he was half Jewish and, and half Gentile. We also learn that he was a believer in Jesus Christ, and he was highly respected by the brethren who lived in his area. And in addition to being a gospel preacher, he was also a, a close personal friend of the Apostle Paul. He also traveled with Paul. And he labored with Paul, and he was someone that the Apostle Paul clearly viewed like a son. In fact, I think we see this when we look at what Paul says about Timothy in the book of Philippians. In Philippians chapter 2, in Philippians chapter 2, beginning with verse number 19, in Philippians 2 and verse 19, Paul says this, to the brethren in Philippi, he says, But I hope in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you shortly so that I also may be encouraged when I learn of your condition. Verse 20, For I have no one else of kindred spirit who will genuinely be concerned for your welfare, for they all seek after their own interests, not of those of Christ Jesus, but you know of his proven worth that he, referring to Timothy, served me with me in the furtherance of the gospel like a child serving his father. Notice, notice very carefully what Paul is, is saying about Timothy to, to the Christians in Philippi. Notice how even though Timothy was a relatively young preacher, he still had a lot of respect from the apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul still viewed him in high regard. He had a lot of respect for Timothy because he knew what kind of man Timothy was. He knew that Timothy was someone who labored hard in the kingdom of God and he truly loved God and he also truly loved God's people. Paul strongly believed all these things about Timothy. The question, though, is, is how did this happen? How did Timothy become this way? How did he become this kind of man? How did he become this faithful servant of God who was thought so highly of by his brethren? What contributed to his zeal and his love for other Christians and, and his devotion to God at, at such a young age? And how can we raise our children to be just like him today? Let us, the Bible, tell us about Timothy's faith. Well, I want to submit to you that there are at least three very important things that the Bible tells us about Timothy's faith. In fact, there are at least three very specific things that the Apostle Paul himself tells us about Timothy's faith. And the first thing is this. The first thing that the Apostle Paul wants us to understand about the faith of his friend Timothy it's number one, Paul wants us to understand that Timothy was taught the faith very early in his life. Timothy was taught the faith very early in his life. I think we see this very clearly when we look at what the scripture says over in the second book that bears Timothy's name, 2 Timothy chapter 3, look at verse number 14. 
In 2 Timothy chapter 3, and in verse number 14, the apostle Paul said these words to Timothy. 2 Timothy 3 verse 14, he says, You, however, continue in the things you've learned and become convinced of, knowing from whom you have learned them. Verse 15, and that from childhood, and that from childhood, you've known the sacred writings, which are able to give you the wisdom that leads to salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Notice here in these verses, we, we see exactly when Timothy started learning the word of God. Notice how according to the apostle Paul, Timothy actually started learning the word of God from the time he was just a small boy. From the time he was just a child, Paul says, he knew the sacred writings. Question, who was responsible for that? Who, who was responsible for for teaching Timothy the word of God from the time he was just a little bitty boy? Well, the answer to that question is actually found back in chapter 1 of this same book. In 2 Timothy chapter 1 in verse number 5, in 2 Timothy 1 in verse 5, Paul says, For I am mindful, and he's speaking to Timothy, I am mindful of the sincere faith within you, which first dwelt, and your grandmother Lois, and your mother Eunice, and I am sure that it is in you as well. Notice how here we see that the people who were responsible for teaching Timothy the word of God from the time he was just a little boy were his mother and his grandmother. It was his mother Eunice and his grandmother Lois, both of these faithful women of God, they were responsible for teaching Timothy the sacred writings when he was just a child. Both of them taught him the word of God when he was just a little boy. And someone may ask the question of, well, Sean, what about Timothy's daddy? Well, what about Timothy's father? I mean, why doesn't Paul say that Timothy's father also contributed to, to him being taught the faith very early? Well, I believe that's a, a very good and legitimate question. And the answer to that question may actually be found in Acts chapter 16. You see, in Acts chapter 16 and verse number 1, when we were first introduced to Timothy, we learn some very important things about his family. We learn from the writer Luke that Timothy's mother was a believer, but his father was a Greek. That language that Luke uses there, it's, it's very, very interesting. In fact, what Luke may be doing there is he may be giving us a contrast. He may be telling us that while Timothy's mother was a believer in Jesus Christ, Timothy, Timothy's father was not. Timothy's father was not a Christian. He was not a follower of Jesus Christ. And yet, even though Timothy's father was not a follower of the way, Paul says Timothy still grew up learning the sacred writings. Due to the teaching provided by his mother and his grandmother, Paul says that Timothy still grew up having the word of God continually planted in his heart. They, his mother and his grandmother, taught him the sacred scriptures. And I want to suggest to you that what Lois and Eunice did for Timothy 2,000 years ago, that's exactly what we need to be doing for our kids today. Regardless of our current situation, regardless of whether we are married to Christians or not, as Christian parents, we also need to be constantly planting the word of God in the hearts of our children. We also need to be grounding our children 
and the truth of God's word from a very young age. Doing this right now while they're young and still in our home, it's absolutely critical. It's absolutely crucial. It is actually a, a responsibility that God has given us as, as stewards over children that ultimately belong to him. I mean, that's exactly what Paul tells us in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse number 4. In Ephesians 6 and verse 4, Paul says fathers. Notice how here in this verse, he singles out the fathers. He singles out the heads of the household, the spiritual leaders of the family. Paul says, fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but instead you, you bring them up in the discipline and the instruction of the Lord. Paul tells fathers that they have a responsibility to, to lead their children in the ways of God. In fact, this is something very similar to what Moses told the children of Israel not long before Joshua would finally lead them into conquering the promised land. In Deuteronomy chapter 11, in Deuteronomy chapter 11, and in verse number 18, Moses said these words, Deuteronomy 11 and verse 18, he says, you shall therefore impress these words of mine on your heart and on your soul. And you shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontals on your forehead. Verse 19, you shall teach them to your sons. Talking of them when you sit in your house, and when you walk along the road, and when you lie down, and when you rise up. Do you see the admonition that Moses is giving to the Israelite parents here? Do you see how here in these verses, Moses is admonishing the parents to make sure that they teach their children the word of God. To make sure that they talk with their children about the word of God. To make sure that they make discussions about the word of God part of their daily routine. That's what Moses told these Israelite parents to do. The question for us is, is are we like them? Are we also doing that? For those of us who are parents currently raising children, are we taking advantage of the limited amount of time we have to plant the word of God in their hearts? For example, are we doing daily Bible reading with our children? Are we making time to, to read that one chapter a day to them five days a week? I mean, one of the blessings of this pandemic we are living in right now is as parents, maybe many of us have a lot more free time, right? But maybe many of us have time now to do some things that maybe we neglected to do before, things like daily Bible reading with our kids. I mean, are we taking advantage of the situation we are in right now to have more time to, to read the Bible every day with our kids? And are we also doing what, what Moses speaks about here in Deuteronomy chapter 11? Are we also discussing the word of God with our kids? Are we also asking questions to our kids about the word of God? Are we also making time to enter entertain the questions that they may have from the word of God? Are we also explaining to them how the word of God applies in their daily lives? Are we also explaining to them how the word of God can help them make good decisions every single day. It can help them make good decisions in regards to the kind of friends that they choose. And in regards to the kind of music that they're choosing to listen to and the kind of movies that they're watching and the kind of stuff they're choosing to look at on the internet and, and even when it comes to the kind of clothes that they choose to wear. We're also discussing with them the sermons 
in the Bible classes that they're currently watching on church websites during this time of pandemic. I ask you that because you do understand it is not enough. It is not enough for our children to be watching classes and sermons on websites during this time. You, you understand that, right? You must understand why there's nothing wrong with them doing that. Why there's nothing wrong with them listening to sermons and Bible classes and them having Bible class teachers and sitting in on Bible classes once we're able to assemble together again. While none of those things are wrong, we got to understand that all those things on their best day are nothing more than a small spiritual supplement. None of them will be able to replace the plan that God has put in his word. The plan that God has put in his word, both in the Old Testament and the New Testament, is when it comes to the upbringing of children, he wants the parents to be the primary spiritual teachers. He doesn't want it to be the elders or the preacher or even their Bible class teachers. No, God says that the primary teachers for children when it comes to spiritual things are to be the parents. That's the responsibility we've been given. And we got to take that responsibility very seriously. We got to make sure that we understand that while there's nothing wrong with helping our kids strive for academic excellence, and while there's nothing wrong with helping them excel in sports and other extracurricular activities, the number one thing God expects us to be doing for them is he expects us to be helping them know him. He expects us to be helping them draw close to them. He expects us to be helping them develop faith in him so they can grow up and have an opportunity to be, to be strong followers of him. That is exactly what Eunice did for her son, Timothy. Paul says that Timothy became a strong soldier for Jesus because his mama spent time teaching him the faith very early. But not only did she teach him the faith very early, a second thing she also did for Timothy is she also helped him develop his faith. She also helped him develop a very sincere faith. This is something that Paul also says in 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse number 5. Going back to that verse we, we read a few minutes ago. Notice what it says very carefully. Paul says, 2 Timothy 1 and verse number 5, For I am mindful, I am mindful of the sincere faith within you, which first, it first dwelt in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice. And Paul says, I am sure, I am confident that this kind of faith is in you as well, Timothy. I really want to highlight this language that Paul uses here when he says that Timothy had a sincere faith. Do you see that? Paul says that Timothy had a sincere faith. When Paul says that Timothy had a sincere faith, what he means is that Timothy had a genuine faith. He, he had an authentic faith. He had a faith that was, that was real and it was his own. Timothy had a real, genuine, and authentic kind of faith. He had a real, genuine, and authentic kind of faith. And maybe another way we can say that is according to what Paul says in this verse, in this verse, Timothy wasn't a hypocrite. Timothy wasn't a hypocrite in the church. He wasn't someone who behaved one way in public and another way in private. He wasn't a religious fraud and, and pretender. Instead, he was the real deal. He was someone who truly loved the Lord. And he truly had faith in God. And he truly cared about his brothers and his sisters in Christ. Paul says that Timothy was a real, authentic, and genuine disciple of Jesus Christ. And the application for us is very simple. The application is we got to make sure we're like that. 
We got to make sure that we're like Timothy when it comes to this. As God looks at us from heaven, he needs to see people who have sincere faiths. He needs to see people who have real and genuine faiths. Even during this time of crisis, even during this time when we're not able to assemble with each other like, like we desire, as God looks at us from heaven, he still needs to see people who are trying to live right. He still needs to see people who are trying to be holy in all of their behavior. He still needs to see people who are trying to be real and authentic followers of Jesus. God needs to see that in me. And he needs to see that in you. And doing that, brothers and sisters, is not only important for our own personal salvation, but it's also important to the salvation of our children. It's also important to the upbringing of our children and the ways of God. I mean, I mean, think about it. Think about it. If we're going to develop and raise children who are like Timothy and that they have a real, genuine faith of their own, if we're really going to raise kids like that, then guess where that has to start? That has to start with us as the parents. That has to start with us showing them by the way we live in front of them what being an authentic disciple is all about. I mean, brothers and sisters, how can I expect my two children to be sold on the benefits of living a faithful Christian life if they don't see me living that way every single day? How can I expect my two children to grow up being excited about being a follower of Jesus Christ if they don't see me being excited about living that way every single day? You see, if I'm truly going to instill in my children a sincere and a genuine faith, you know where that starts? That starts with me making sure that I show them how to have that kind of faith every day. That starts with me making sure that, that I'm not a religious hypocrite. That starts with me making sure that I don't go to church every single Sunday and sit in the pew in a nice suit. And I sing the songs, and I pray the prayers, and I say amen to the preaching, and I shake my brethren's hands after services, but then I go home, and guess what? I curse out my spouse. I look at pornography on my computer. I gossip about my brethren. I never allow my kids to see me reading the word of God and doing my Bible lesson, and I never carve out time to, to pray with them each day. My kids don't see me living the life of a faithful Christian. Then any teaching I give them from the scriptures is going to be ineffective. You see, we got to understand that we make and fool a lot of people when it comes to this Christianity thing. We make and fool our community. We make and fool the people in our jobs and our brethren, and the elders, and even the preacher. We make and fool all those people very easily, but two groups of people we can never fool is we can't fool those who make up the Godhead, and we can't fool our kids. We can't fool our kids when it comes to our faith because guess what? They live with us. They're watching us all the time. They're watching us even when we don't realize they're watching us. 
If anyone knows the truth about us, they do. And if we don't want them growing up, viewing us as hypocrites, and if we want to instill in them the joys that come with living a faithful Christian life, then we got to make sure we're the real deal. We got to make sure that we're just like Timothy. We got to make sure that we have sincere, genuine, and authentic faith. Timothy was taught the faith very early. And he had a very sincere and authentic faith. But then the third and final thing Paul tells us about his faith is third and finally, Paul also wants us to know that Timothy had an active faith. He had an active faith. Brothers and sisters, when we say that Timothy had an active faith, What we mean is that Timothy then just professed to be a follower of Jesus. He didn't just profess to be a disciple and to have faith in God, but he also demonstrated his devotion and his faith in God by being active in the service of God. We mean that Timothy was busy, even as a young disciple, bearing some fruit for the glory of God. We mean that even as a young person, Timothy was busy doing kingdom work. He was teaching the word of God. He was preaching the word of God. He was edifying the saved, trying to win the lost. He traveled around the world, working with Paul and even suffering. For the cause of the gospel. He had a very active faith as a young as a young man. And the question is, how did he develop that? How did he develop an active faith? Well, I think that there are at least two reasons why Timothy developed this kind of faith. And the first reason is actually tied to the previous point. It's because he had sincere faith. You see, because Timothy had a sincere and genuine faith because he was the real deal, because he truly loved God and truly loved God's people, then, of course, he would then naturally be busy about the service of God. You see, when a person truly loves God, And when a person truly loves God's word and God's people, it doesn't matter what age they are. They're going to be zealous. They're going to be eager to do some kingdom work. And so Timothy had an active faith because he had a sincere faith. But then secondly, a second reason why he had this kind of faith is because he was encouraged to have this kind of faith by older and seasoned disciples. He was encouraged to have this kind of faith by his close friend and mentor, the Apostle Paul. Go over to 1 Timothy, not 2 Timothy this time, but 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse number 12. In 1 Timothy 4 and verse 12, Paul said this to Timothy, Let no one, let no one look down on your youthfulness, but rather in speech, Conduct, love, faith, and purity. Show yourself an example of those who believe. Verse 13, until I come, give attention to the public reading of Scripture, to exhortation and teaching. Do not neglect the spiritual gift within you, which was bestowed on you through prophetic utterance with the laying on of hands by the presbytery. And there's a lot we could say about those verses this morning, but due to time, I just want to make this point. I just want you to notice how even though Timothy was a relatively young man, Paul still encouraged him to be very active in the work of God. Paul told him to rise above the low expectations that people may have on him because of his youth and prove to be an example, prove to be an example in every aspect of Christianity. Prove to be an example in the way that you talk and in the way that you conduct yourself and in the way that you treat other people. 
never neglect to be a good steward of the spiritual talents and ability God has given you. Here in these verses, Paul is encouraging Timothy to be very active in his faith as a young man. And just like Paul did that for Timothy, guess what? We also need to be doing that for our young people today. Like Timothy was encouraged to have an active faith, we also need to be encouraging our young people to have an active faith. We also need to be setting high expectations for them. We also need to be helping them understand that even in the days of their youth, God can still use them. God can still use young men who are disciples to be worship leaders, to lead in singing and to preach and teach and to lead as people in prayers. When it comes to both young male and female disciples, God can use them to visit and encourage the sick and the shut-ins and the elderly. God can use them to do evangelism. God can use them to spread the borders of the kingdom. God can use them even to be a righteous example in this dark and sinful world. Like Paul did for Timothy. When it comes to our young people, we don't need to be content with just giving them token tasks in the kingdom. We don't need to be content with just giving them a few things to do every now and then. Instead, we need to be encouraging them to be very active in the service of God. We need to be encouraging them not just to have faith in God, but to have a zealous faith. To have a very active faith, to have the kind of faith that not only professes belief in Jesus, but also demonstrates that faith by using their talents and abilities, even right now, to the glory of God. That's the kind of faith Timothy had. And that's the kind of faith we all need to have. It doesn't matter how old or young we may be in the kingdom. Let us pray. Almighty God, thank you for your word. Thank you for the details the Holy Spirit gives us in regards to your servant, Timothy. Bless us all to be able to develop and maintain faiths like he had. Bless us to have sincere and genuine faiths. Bless us to teach that to our kids. Bless us all to be very active in your service because we appreciate all you've done for us through your son, Jesus. Father, we ask you to continue to be with us during this time. Bless us all soon to be able to assemble together again as your people and to be healthy while at the same time very cautious. But God, just continue to look upon us with your great love and your care and bless us to keep our faith very high. In Jesus' name, amen.